In this module, we look at cluster random sampling. Now, limitations on the information possessed about a population can restrict the ways in which populations are sampled. Recall that in order to sample individual members from a population using simple or stratified random sampling, a sampling frame must exist that includes every member of the population. It is from this sampling frame that the sample is randomly selected. Now, in many situations, no such sampling frame can be constructed. In such situations, it would be impossible to utilize simple or stratified sampling procedures to sample the population at the level of the individual member. However, in such situations, it may be the case that the population can be partitioned into known groups or clusters, which could then be listed instead. Logistics and economics associated with the sampling process can also impact the way in which a population is sampled. For example, when population members are physically separated, sampling costs often increase as the distance between population members increases. When population members are far apart, it may be unfeasible to sample the population using a procedure in which sampling units correspond to actual population members. In such situations, it may be the case that the population consists of clusters within which population members are in relatively close proximity while the clusters themselves are relatively far apart. A sampling methodology known as cluster random sampling can be used to deal with the kinds of problems just discussed. A cluster random sample is a probability sample in which each sampling unit consists of a number of members of the population. These sampling units containing multiple population members are called clusters. Now cluster random sampling will be most effective when there is heterogeneity within clusters and homogeneity between clusters. In other words, cluster random sampling will be most effective when there is a lot of variation within clusters, but the various clusters tend to look similar overall. Now here's the uh, cluster sampling process. Uh, first, we have to identify the clusters. The clusters must be mutually exclusive and collectively exhausted. Number two, we need to create the list of all clusters comprising the population. This list constitutes the sampling frame. And then three, select a simple random sample of clusters from the sampling frame. Once the sample of clusters is obtained, the required data is obtained from every member within each of the selected clusters. Now here uh, is some notation associated with cluster random sampling, and these are population level quantities. Cap N is the number of clusters comprising the population. For each I going from 1 to N, M sub I, cap M sub I, is the number of members within cluster I. The sum of the M sub I's, cap M without a subscript, is the total number of members in the population. And then if we divide cap M by cap N, we're going to denote that ratio by cap M bar, and that is the average cluster size across the entire population. Then we have sample level quantities. Lowercase n is the number of clusters selected for the sample. And then for each of the selected clusters, i going from 1 to little n, y sub i is the total of all the observations in the ith selected cluster. In other words, it's the total of the observed response for all of the members in the ith selected cluster. The sum i going from 1 to little n of the cap m sub i's is the number of members in the sample. And then if we divide that by little n, we'll denote that by lowercase m bar. That is the average cluster size in the sample. Now let's look at inferences for a population mean using cluster random sample. We'll first look at the estimator of the population mean. So an estimator of the population mean is given by the sample mean, which perhaps is not too uh, surprising. We will denote the estimator of mu by mu hat, and it's equal to y bar, which is the usual notation for the sample mean when we're using y's to represent the response variable. But remember, the uh, y sub i's are actually the total uh, of the response in a given selected cluster. Now, in words, y bar is equal to the sample total divided by the sample size. 
and that is typical. That's, that's what the uh, sample mean usually is. All right, let's look and see how that works out or what it looks like mathematically using the notation. So the sample total is the sum of the y sub i's, i going from 1 to little n, so it's the uh, sum of the cluster totals for the clusters selected for the sample. And then we divide that by the sum, i going from 1 to little n, of the cap m sub i's. All right, and again, the cap m sub i is the size of the ith cluster. So the thing I want to point out here is that even though we're calling mu hat uh, the sample mean, it differs from other estimators we've seen with that same name in that both the numerator and the denominator are random variables. Now that's typically not the case. Typically we would have the sum of the response divided by, for example, little n, all right, which is typically uh, used to denote the sample size. And in that framework, the little n is not random. Right? It's not a random variable. The, the numerator is, is uh, uh, random, but the denominator is not. But here, uh, in this setup, because uh, we're selecting clusters, and the denominator of this uh, quantity is the, is the uh, total number of members across the clusters that are selected, that is also a random variable. Okay, and so because of that, or one result of that, is that this estimator, mu hat, the, which is y bar, uh, the uh, sample mean is not an unbiased estimator of mu. It's biased. All right. It's a this is a form of a ratio estimator, right? And because the numerator and denominator are random variables, this is not unbiased as an estimator of mu. Now, an estimator of the variance of the sampling distribution of mu hat, the uh, estimator of the population mean, is given here on slide 11. All right, and so it is this expression here. We'll denote the estimated variance of mu hat by uh, sigma hat squared sub mu hat, as we've done before. And so note that uh, this involves uh, cap n, which is the total number of clusters in the population. It involves little n, uh, the uh, number of clusters selected for the sample. It involves the square of cap m bar. Remember, cap m bar is the average cluster size in the population. And then it involves this sum on the right-hand side here, the sum of squared deviations between each y sub i and uh, y bar times cap m sub i. And we'll talk about how to uh, efficiently calculate this in just a second. Once we have this estimator of the variance of the sampling distribution of mu hat, then we take the square root of that to get the estimated standard error of mu hat. Now keep in mind that this uh, estimator of the variance of the sampling distribution of mu hat is not unbiased. Now that expression on the right hand side of that for the variance of uh, the sampling distribution of mu hat, this sum here, can be expanded and then calculated uh, using this expansion so that we don't have to take these differences and square them up. So uh, we calculate the various summary statistics uh, that are listed here and then we uh, use this expansion formula to calculate that sum of squared deviations. And that'll allow us to calculate that much, much easier and more efficiently. Once we have the estimated standard error of uh, mu hat, then we can multiply that by two to get our approximate 95% margin of error associated with mu hat. And uh, from there, we can also construct an approximate 95% confidence interval estimate for mu. And so uh, here on slide 13 is the expression for the approximate 95% margin of error associated with mu hat. And then we have at the bottom of the slide, we have the uh, formula for obtaining the endpoints of a, uh, an approximate 95% confidence interval estimate for mu. All right, so let's look at an example, an application of this. A sociologist wants to estimate the average per capita income in a, a certain small city. No list of adult residents is available. However, the city is marked off into rectangular blocks and a listing of blocks is available. Because of this, the sociologist decides to sample the population using cluster random sampling. There are 415 blocks or clusters uh, in the city to select from. The researchers had enough time and enough money to sample 25 clusters and to interview every household within each cluster. A simple random sample of 25 clusters was therefore selected and their locations marked on a map of the city. 
Interviewers were then sent out to these selected clusters to interview the residents. The data are given on the next slide. And so we hear, here we have the data, and the data are paired. Cap M sub I is the number of residents on the selected block, and then Y sub I is the total income per cluster in units of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, so the, the corresponding M sub I and Y sub I values are paired. So for example, uh, the eight, uh, the value of eight for uh, M1 and the value of uh, 96 for Y1 are paired, as are the 12 and the 121, the four and the 42, and so forth. Using these data, estimate the average per capita income in the city, compute the approximate margin of error associated with the estimate, in addition, construct an approximate 95% compensable estimate for mu. Okay, so here are the various summary statistics and information available to us about the population. So again, we, have, we know that we have 415 uh, blocks in the city. They've selected a sample of 25 blocks. All right, the sum of the M sub I, so this is the number of people uh, the total number of people selected in the 25 blocks is 151. The sum of the squared M sub I values is 1047. All right, the sum of the Y sub I values is 1329. The sum of the squared Y values is 82,039. And then the sum of the uh, M sub I's times the Y sub I's for the sample is 8,403. Now, uh, little m bar, which is the average cluster size in the sample, is uh, 6.04. All right, and cap m bar, which is the average cluster size in the population, is not known, and it's not known because we don't know cap m. And so, the formula, the, the formulas that we're using, uh, require cap m bar or an estimate of it. And since we don't have cap m bar. We're going to have to use an estimate of cap m bar, and that estimate is going to be provided by little m bar. So again, cap m bar is the average cluster size in the population. We don't know that, but we do know the average cluster size in the sample, and so we'll use little m bar as an estimate of cap m bar. Okay, y bar, which is the sample mean, is calculated as the sum of the y sub i values divided by the sum of the cap m sub i values. All right, so 1329 over 151, and so we have 8.8013. And so a point estimate of mu, mu hat, is equal to 8.8013. So remember that uh, mu is the average per capita income in the population, and that we the, the units of what we're uh, measuring here, the units of the y values, is income in units of $100,000. All right, and so what this is saying is that our point estimate for the average per capita income in this particular population is $880,000 essentially. All right, so this is a, a pretty affluent community. Now to calculate the estimated variance of mu hat, it's standard error and approximate 95% margin of error associated with mu hat, we have to calculate this sum of squared differences between uh, the y sub i's and these values here. And we're going to use this expansion formula, all right, and we have the summary statistics that we need on this page at the top and also on the previous page. And so we plug those in and uh, we get 15,228.02912. And I'm just carrying out a lot of decimal places here to really reduce any kind of rounding error. Uh, if, if, if I need to at the end, I can uh, always round the final answer. All right, so the estimate of the variance of mu hat, okay, given by this formula here, right, we just calculated that sum of squared differences on the previous slide, and we have all the ingredients we need except cap m bar, all right? We don't know that, and so remember, we're gonna have to estimate it with little m bar. And so we plug in that 6.04, which we calculated a couple pages ago. All right, and so the estimated variance of mu hat is gonna be approximately equal to, and I've got that approximate there because you know, we're estimating cap m bar by little m bar. So it's approximately uh, 0.653785. And then we take the square root of that to get the estimated standard error 
of mu hat, and so that turns out to be 0 0.808. 5698. We then multiply that by 2 to get our approximate 95% margin of error associated with mu hat. That turns out to be 1.61714. And then we combine that with the point estimator. We subtract the margin of error from and add, uh, add it to that point estimator mu hat. And so we get an approximate 95% confidence interval estimate for mu, the average per capita income in the population, ranging from 7.1 1842 up to 10.4184. And remember that uh, the units are uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right, so if we put it back in the units of dollars, then we're approximately 95% confident that the uh, average per capita income in this uh, particular city is somewhere between 718,420 and um, uh, a little over a million dollars, right? So this is again an, an affluent, uh, affluent community. All right, so that's how we use uh, cluster random sampling to estimate a population mean, uh, both a point estimator and a confidence interval estimator. All right, next we're going to look at how to estimate a population total using cluster random sampling.